Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests from all over the world, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to uh, address you at this uh, opening at uh, New Shipping 2011. In uh, 2007, the uh, Lebanese-American uh, mathematician and philosopher Nassim Nicholas Taleb wrote a book where he relaunched the uh, ancient Greek uh, myth about the black swan. Black Swan, his book was called uh, The uh, Impact of the Highly Improbable. And the, this Greek uh, myth um, goes to the, um, um, the idea that you think that all swans are white, and then suddenly you find a black one. Um, and he wrote about this, um, this uh, black swan as something with a huge magnitude, with uh, great importance and which changes everything. I think the um, financial crisis that came just after the book was launched was such a black swan. We thought that all swans were white, we thought that uh, growth were going steadily forward and everything looked bright, the sky was blue. And suddenly something highly improbable but with uh, huge consequences actually happened. When uh, the book was launched in 2007, the Sunday Times uh, as one of, uh, called it one of the 12 most influential books since the Second World War. And the theory is brilliant in its own right, but the timing was, of course, uh, also uh, excellent. And his uh, message is that black swans will continue to come, and we have to prepare, build a society that is robust, that can handle these kind of unpredicted, highly improbable uh, facts. The maritime industry was no exception to be hit from the financial crisis. Actually, the industry was probably hit harder than many others. Freight and charter rates were plunged, several shipping companies were cutting jobs, and many ships were laid up for months at the time. Today, two years later, most of the maritime industry has recovered from the black swan that hit us in the last quarter of 2008. On this year's conference, we are setting the course for the years to come. The theme of the conference is the next generation of shipping, and the question is simply, what's next? What will the next generation of shipping look like? Delegates from uh, 80 different countries are here. High-level executives and next-generation leaders are invited to discuss the core challenges and the possibilities for the maritime industry in the years to come. And I'm looking forward to hearing the upcoming speeches and discussions. And later today, I will myself host the Maritime Summit with participation from major shipping countries and again the future of the industry, sustainable shipping, Arctic shipping will be on our agenda. The idea to create a society that is robust against shocks, uh, a black swan robust society, is also important for a global industry as the shipping industry. We know that we will see an increased demand for seaborne trade. We know the trends are on, what should we say, on our side. We know that we will see increased demand for more environmental sound shipping, which will, I think, give business opportunities, new technologies, and more investments. We will see, and be sure, we will see international binding regulations on climate, on emissions, on environmental standards. And I think, as always, those who are in advance, those who develop the new technologies, those who don't wait for, well, more um, slow politicians, uh, those who go ahead, forward-looking, investing in the future, they will also be the winners of the future competitions. We know also that we need young people, young talent, attracted to the business. We need skilled labor to face challenges, so to create also uh, a labor-friendly industry, that attracts young people is to the core of what this industry is about. The question is how we, 
politicians, business and industry leaders can contribute to build a society where this industry can thrive and grow. After a rough year in 2009 due to the credit crunch, seaborne trade trends are once again picking up. The volume is up 7.6% from 2009 and up 2.9% compared to 2008. According to a report by Clarkson Research Service Limited for the Norwegian Ministry of Trade and Industry, seaborne trade totaled 8.4 billion tons in 2010. That is more than one ton for each person, person on the planet and roughly 90% of all global trade. Historically, global seaborne trade has tracked economic activity with a strong correlation between growth in GDP and growth in global trade. We also know that the maritime shipping industry will remain fundamental to international trade in the years to come as, the, as it is the only practical and cost-effective means of transportation of large volumes across continents. And I think we will see with the great new economies, China, India, Brazil, South Africa, growing uh, steadily from 5 to 10%, I think we will see trade growing even more faster and even more steadier uh, in the future. Global seaborne trade is projected to grow by 4% in the 10 coming years, according to uh, Clark Clarkson Limited, with Asia and China in particular in leading position. Irrespective of scale and scope, for the long run for this business, we have to make sure that the future growth in seaborne trade is sustainable, both economically and uh, environmentally. It's up to you, the industry, to tell us politicians when we meet in the international conference that you are the solution to our challenges, to find way to combine the global growth, bringing millions and hundreds of millions into the industrial economy and combining this with climate solutions. For one single company, an investment in increased capacity involves an economic trade-off between cost and benefits or potential risk and earnings. For the industry as a whole, however, we also have to make sure that there is a balance between the traditional economic trade-offs uh, on one hand and, in the, and the environmental and social pillars on the other. Bringing people together, discussing solutions, challenging each other, knowing what the, our hardest competitors are doing, that's also a part of Nor Shipping Conference to see and to learn and to build new partnerships in finding good solutions. There is no easy fix, no easy way to the future. There are several, a multitude of solutions. We can contribute as governments, as the Norwegian uh, government also does, to invest in basic research, to provide the industry with framework conditions and long-term predictable conditions. We can provide national and worldwide decisions to contribute to the development of national and international regulations uh, but I think, again, long-term stability, predictability is key. There is, however, some work that remains before we are satisfied with the existing rules and regulations. Uh, the um, international shipping are negotiated and governed in organizations like the IMO and the International Labor Organization, ILO. Hence, fruitful discussions on the future of shipping must take into, into account these organizations agendas. That being said, we know that both IMO and EU are now considering tougher regulations to re reduce emissions in international shipping. The question is therefore not if, but when such regulations are put in place. For the industry, robustness is all about facing that fact. To see the business opportunities, to make the investments, which is uh, not small in this industry, and to be long-term committed to build world economic results. The industry is the cornerstone to technological development. We see from our history, we saw the pictures, how the uh, tall ships developed into new uh, diesel-driven ships, how we new, now develop new energy sources, how our traditional fishery industry uh, was um, developed into the oil and gas industry, how we specialize 
how we invest in new innovation, and how we continuously and more rapidly develop new technologies. We need more energy efficient uh, technologies. Uh, we need uh, new solutions. And we need, again, the research institutions, the uh, academic institutions to be a partner with the industry in developing the whole new arena. The maritime industry has a bright future. Irrespective of sectors, sustainable growth is the vision for the future. I would uh, venture to claim that in the near future, the only prevailing strategy for each and every industry is a combination of profits and smarter, cleaner ways of doing business. Being alert to black swans, whether it being financial crisis, economic shocks, or environmental surprises, I think this industry has shown again and again that we meet the shocks with new ideas, new innovations, uh, and with a bright perspective on the future. This optimism, this uh, strong backbone of the industry coming back again and again is, I think, a proof, a living proof that this industry is a future industry. I look forward to hearing the upcoming speeches by people who will be in their companies for the next 30, 40 years. And one thing is certain, the next decades will be changing even faster than the ones that we have behind us. On a final note, again, let me thank uh, Nor Shipping for organizing this major conference, the world's largest maritime event this year, no less. And secondly, for bringing key stakeholders together to discuss our joint course for the years to come. I wish you the best of luck with the conference and the Nor Shipping exhibition. Thank you for your attention.